The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins. The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. When it was over, his former life was over, too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. Join Frank Race for the adventure of the Shanghai Incident. My seat was a park bench that overlooked the oil scum waters of the East River. Everything considered, it wasn't what you'd call a glamorous atmosphere. But I was drowsy. The sun felt warm in my back. I didn't want to move. Hey, Ray! That's Lynch. The voice belonged to Mark Donovan. Never exactly a soothing it was. I hunched my shoulders, closed my eyes. Hi. Right. Got a guy who wants to see you? Yeah, I'll tell him I'm out. He's waiting in the cab. Just to tell you his name is Breslin. That broke my eyes. Matt Breslin. One of the best blocking backs that ever sized his way through a broken field. I know him. I carried the ball behind him on more than one of his jobs. I haven't seen him for years. I got up and we went to the cab. Oh, it's good to see you, boy. <laughs> it's been a long time. Too long, Matt. What are you doing for yourself? Well, I guess you can say I'm in the same racket you are. Insurance. I'm running the American branch of Floyd. And when you say insurance, you mean insurance. Underwrite everything from weather to the possibility of triple. <laughs> That's us. We've got a job for you. I was after you about a month ago, but you were in Europe. Matt, I promised myself I wouldn't do a thing for a month. I've still got three weeks to go. You remember Chuck Howard, don't you? Oh, of course. Very decent guy. When we couldn't get you, we turned our assignment over to Chuck. He did all right. He's a good operator. He's a dead operator, Race. He was murdered on the job three days ago. The ribbon. I wish I were. Chuck Howard had three kids. I keep thinking of that. How did it happen? Why? We thought you might want to find that out for us. What was the assignment? Did you ever hear of South China Transport? Yeah, it's an airline. I know some of the boys that fly the plane. We indemnify them against cargo loss. And lately, there have been nothing but losses. They've been destroying valuable cargoes all over the countryside. Well, the great countryside that goings on. Just like contact over there. A lad by the name of Jack Stacy. He handles operations. Used to be in the Navy. You'll probably find him pretty sick. He was badly wounded in the fracas that killed Chuck Howard. Where will he be? In Shanghai. I'm running in Shanghai, and I got the feeling that all of China was weak. Maybe I was thinking too much about Chuck Howard. Ah, uh, what do you know? To think that when I was 16, I tried to join a Marine just to see China. What kept me out? The underweight? Nah. Under the thumb of me all day. She wasn't trying to pay the well, uh, what's the pick in it, Ray? What do we do next? I have to see a man named Stacy at a hotel called the Kalani. Kalani, huh? <laughs> Probably run by a Lithuanian who calls himself Clancy. What do you want me to do? Go along with you? Mark, whenever you ask a question like that, I always know you have a project in mind. <laughs> well, they tell me there is a place here in Shanghai where you can get them. Um, Tattooing done, which will knock your people. No, nah, that kid stuff. Don't they have enough of those things in there? Oh, I want just one more. This guy does a dancer, which they say will keep you dreaming even after you're too old for it. Now, go on, then. Get your tattoo. <laughs> sure, I'll see us early enough so we can have supper again. <laughs> the lobby of the Hotel Kalani looked like the breakup of a Rose Bowl crowd. I spent 15 minutes at the desk just getting the number to Jack Stacy's room. 
then I turned away. I felt a grip of fingers in my arm. And another something started. There is a divan at the far corner of the lobby, Mr. Ray. It would be discreet of you to accompany me there so that we may talk. He had the face of the Buddha. He wore the clothes of a New York broker. Something that the sharpness against my side came from the point of a knife. I went with him. As we sat down, three other Chinese closed in around us. I am Lin Wan. Would you care for a cigarette? No, thanks. You are naturally wondering why I took such pains to converse with you. Naturally. It is because I wish to give you a warning and at the same time offer you a sum of money. Mm. Yes, mm. I am going to ask you to forget your assignment, Mr. Ray, and to accept from us an amount that will soothe any abrasion to your pride. Just like that. On the other hand, should you choose to be difficult, I can promise you trouble of that exquisite nature for which we Chinese are noted. Besides, what can you really accomplish, Mr. Ray? Your investigation will take you into the open country of China, where you will find no worthwhile law enforcement authority. We've run across that problem before, Mr. Min. Indeed. When we lack local means of breaking up a racket, if you're familiar with the term, I am thoroughly familiar with it. We break it up ourselves. Mr. Ray, I still have the point of a sharp blade pressed against the most vulnerable part of your person. Mm. Well, fact. It would be simple for me to drive it into your body. It would simply leave you sitting here. And the point of that being that I should carefully consider your proposal. Carefully. I shall give you until this evening to assure me that you will efface yourself. Until six o'clock this evening. There's one factor about all this that piques my curiosity. Yes? As you pointed out, at least it's a small matter to murder me. What keeps you from doing it? Perhaps, Mr. Ray, because I dislike violence. But that will not keep me from acting should your decision prove unsatisfactory. <laughs> I found Jack Stacy propped up on a couch in his room, his arm in a sling. This position is match for the weather. Ah, it's a mess, Race. Somebody's trying to force us out. That's the size of it. We've been doing well, too well, I guess. So now they're moving in. No idea who killed Chuck Howard and crippled you. Huh? The only thing I know about it is the bullet they took out of my arm. I really knew about that. We were short on anesthetic. That's it? The slug in the mantle? Ah, that's it. Thirty-eight. But over here, that won't mean much. How do I know when you're going to fly those cargoes? Can't you keep it quiet? I've done everything to make my people wear muzzles. Gets out somehow. They never miss. What about your pilots? Should I talk to one of them? Well, there's one of them in the hotel right now. I'll get them here for you in a few minutes. The pilot showed up in about half an hour. Tall, weathered-looking westerner. Yeah, sure. They try to pump us. Try it all the time. They ain't cute about it, too. They use women. Mighty nice looking here. Johnny? And uh, that's the one I ran into. Might have been Russian. I'm not sure. Whatever she is, uh, it's an awful exclusive pattern. What's her name? Alicia Bronson. Uh, I don't suppose you know where she stands. <laughs> Mister, the day I slip up on finding out a lady's address, I'm going to be ready for that old rocking chair. All right, man. Just leave yourself with that information right now. <laughs> Hello, Miss Bronson. Who is it? My name is Race. How did you get in here? The practice of bribery will do wonders in any part of the world. May I suggest that you turn up the lamp? What is it you want? I couldn't ask it. In the greater light, she was his brand said. An exclusive pattern. Twenty of skin and hair. The look of her gave me that I'm feeling in my chest one reminiscent of my first deep drag of a cigarette. You stared at me. Why? You must be used to it. What do you want? 
Last week, a friend of mine was murdered in Shanghai. Thought you might be able to tell me something about it. I'm sorry. I can tell you nothing. Who was your friend? A man called Charles Howard. You knew him, didn't you? Yes, I knew him. A nice person, gentle and kind. I had nothing to do with his death, Ray. Not directly, Ray. Nor indirectly. I told them nothing about Charles Howard. That... Why does a girl like you have to become involved in such a thing? Do you know what China is like for a woman who has no nationality? A woman who comes from a group of people who have no place in the world. A white Russian. My father was quite Russian, and my mother. What I am, I don't know. Well, let's get back to Chuck Howard. How long did you know him? A week or two. He was lonely here. He would talk about America, about his family. He was a nice person. Who killed him? I don't know, Ray. I took hold of him. Pulled it close to me. The body felt lax in his body. Suddenly, she stiffened in my arms. Her head turned. Her eyes stared at the dark and it opened into the room. Ray. A dark, bleak figure had etched itself inside the frame of the window. A figure with arm drawn back, with knife poised. I beat the throw by a hair, ducking as he let go. The blade gunned with regret as it went by me and bit into the door. Twisting to the window, I got hold of the thrower and... Are you all right? Yes. Thanks to you. I won't forget it. Come with me. Where? I'll tell you in a minute. Come along. Hold it. What are we doing, Ray? Yeah. Look up at the building. Oh. Our knife throwing friend is climbing down from the balcony. Mm. Right, Ray. I brought you out here to keep you safe. Why did you let him go, Ray? Mm, he's small, Ray. I want to follow him to where the big ones are biting. <laughs> My shadowing act ended in a run down section of the foreign settlement. Here the knife thrower disappeared into the recesses of a bleak looking structure with all its windows boarded up. I strolled casually alongside the place, giving the heavy timbered door the once over. I became conscious of shadowy figures around me. A familiar voice spoke out of the night. Good evening, Mr. Ray. Lin Wan. This your place? For you, Mr. Ray, that can have no importance. I warned you that your time would be up by six o'clock this evening. It is now nine. We'll return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. to the adventures of Frank Race. I've been six or seven of them. The one nearest me I put out of action with a fast backhand of the end of devil. But this threw me off balance for Lin Wan, who stepped in, took me with a hard wrist lock, and <laughs> threw me against the wall of the house with a judo hold I hadn't been prepared for. <laughs> On my back, I caught the first one with my feet, and <laughs> gave him the taste of a fall. Lin Wan came. Again, catching me off balance. Twisted me with a toe hold, getting me face down. There came a sweet, compelling smell of chloroform. I got back my senses. I'm all crazy. On a train. A Chinese train. I knew we were heading north. 
And there's a glad boy who drops in on us every once in a while. Tell me, how'd they, how'd they take you? With a sash waiting to fail them. I am right now thanking the old man and the old lady for giving me this thick Irish skull. Oh. Did you get your tattooing done? Did I? <laughs> Will you see? Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me get my sleeve up. <laughs> Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Now look, Lucy. I, uh, wiggle the old muscle like this. Ain't <laughs> 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 hey, that terrific, Ray? <laughs> Just like Minsky's boy last from Broadway. We kept rolling north. Now the sun reached the zenith midday. And until the glare mellowed in the late afternoon. It was at this time that a man opened the door and motioned for Mark to leave the compartment. Then I had company. Then one. He came over and sat down beside me. I trust you are feeling no ill effects from your experience, Mr. Ray. I'm suffering from curiosity more than anything else. Indeed. You murdered Chuck Howard. Why hold back with entrance? Then the insurance company would send another man, and we would have to do it all over again. It is our opinion that we should just take you out of circulation for a few months. Besides, too many murders could bring unfavorable scrutiny from your government. I said it was your government, too. I do not comprehend. Why don't you relax, men? You can cut it with American ease as good as mine. What gives you such an impression? The clothes, for one thing. Purchased in London, Bond Street. Purchased in Los Angeles. Spring Street. I'll give odds on that. All right, Ray. But you must admit my way of handling myself is completely oriental. You do know. That's good. To learn it, I had to come to China. You could have gotten in the States, I didn't. But your judo is, uh, shall we say, just a little tired. Oh. Well, we're slowing down for some reason. And as he lit his cigarette, the train lurched, causing the light to go out. The enemy of the cigarettes and the small box of safety matches. I looked at him, grinning. Why do you smile? I was thinking what a difference it makes to have an advantage. Shanghai, you had your boys to tip me off balance. This moment, you're the one who's behind the April. You will explain, won't you, Ray? Yes, yes. Now, this box of matches you handed me, I simply rolled my fingers around it. And... Out to the temple with a box of matches here, says. It's always a good trick. The matches triple the impact. I was a little surprised he hadn't been hit to it. But we were even. He had a Colt 45 on him, the old army model. This I confiscated. Figuring with the order to me. Mark and I had to get off the train. There was still another lad to handle on the far side of that door. Importantly, he stood facing me. We both fired at the same time. Right! I'm all right. I'm all right. Get his gun. You're bleeding. It's all over your face. Trace me. Get that gun. Hey, there's more of them coming. Now, get back in the compartment. Hey. Hey, they're going to break in. Yeah, we'll have to jump for it. Break the window. We're moving too fast. We'll have to try it. Break the window. All right. All right. Let's go. Particularly when it comes to travel. But you can get around if you carry weapons and money. And show what this position is useful. So we made it back to Shanghai, taking four days to do it. And at the Hotel Kalani, I found not only Jack Stacy and Brand the Flyer, but also Matt Bresman, who just flown in. Uh, you don't know how glad I am to see you. When I heard you were missing, it was too much for me. So I came over. I wish I could report a little progress, man. 
How about this fellow who's been giving you so much trouble? Lin Juan? He's an American. Part Chinese, but an American just the same. Which probably means that he's plenty smart. Ah, so you've got your arm out of the sling, Stacy. How's it feel? Good as new. Yeah, he needed it good as new this morning. He had to swim with it. What happened? Oh, Brand and I went out in the fishing junk and like a goofer fell overboard. Nothing serious. Brand flipped me a life, boy, and that's all there was to it. Uh, Race, uh, what about this Lin Wan? How are we going to handle him? I don't know, man. I imagine we'll just have to wait until he pries into the picture again. Late that evening, just after Marky slipped out the nightcap, I had a visitor. Hello, Ray. Come in. I did not pay for you, Ray. That is the reason I cabled your company in America. You did what? I cabled So you. you brought Matt Bressman over here. Matt Bressman? He's a friend of mine. He doesn't know. Oh, I'm glad to see you back, Ray. Well, we left something unfinished the last time I saw him, Ray. Remember? I remember. It was me. She put her arms around me, tilted the mouth at the wine. Mm-hmm. When they tell you that such kisses taste like wine, they're crazy. Wine doesn't even come close. I'm very fond of you, Ray. Happened in a hurry, didn't it? You think it is impossible for it to happen in a hurry? No? No, I don't think it's impossible. But you might do something to it. How? Tell me who asked you to talk to Stacy Spies. You know the man, Ray. Lin Wan. Did he ever say anything about others being tied in with him? No. He just gave me a group picture of all the men who worked for the airline. A picture? Bless I, I may have it here in my purse. Wait. What are you doing carrying a clip of 38s around here? The bullets? They came from Chuck Howard's gun. Chuck Howard's gun? I was one of those who found him. He was still conscious. And he seemed to want me to have it. It's a little grim bequest. And where do you keep the gun? At my place. Glad? If you like. Here. Here is a picture. Oh, does it tell you anything? It tells me a lot. That gun may tell me more. Do you want it tonight? You're not this late. I'll come by your apartment tomorrow. Do you keep the gun in a safe place? Where no one would ever find it. In the center of a sack of salt. <laughs> As soon as I got to a door, I knew that something was wrong. The door stood half ajar. Inside the room, everything was chaos. Chairs overturned, broken, tables on the side. I found the gun all right, where Alicia said it would be. But Alicia was gone. I knew I'd have to move quickly. So I found a phone and called Jack Stacy. Stacy speaking. Mrs. Race. Gonna need your help. Sure, Race. Uh, do you know where to find Matt Bressman and that pilot of yours, Brand? No, not right now, but I can probably locate him. I told him to let it ride. He couldn't afford to wait. I gave him the location of the place in the foreign settlement. The house where I bumped into Lynn Wan and company. Stacy promised to be there now. Mm-hmm. Good as his word. Put the structure in. This the headquarters? That seems to be. And I think they're holding a girl here. The girl has been helping us. You willing to go in? Sure, if you'll show me how. I thought we might go in by way of this door. Is that lock to open? We'll need TNT. I thought possibly you might have a key for it. You thought that... I don't get it. Neither did I. Until I remembered that you were supposed to have been in the Navy. Well, I was in the Navy. No, Stacy. No, whatever your name really is. No Navy man would ever say life boy. Pronunciation's optional, but you call them buoys in the Navy. Always. 
Move ahead of us and open the door. Straight ahead, Mark. You're making a big mistake, Ray. How could I take the place of another man? By murdering him. And firing the man who'd been close to him. I saw a picture of the regular pilot group last night. The ones who were in it before you installed your own boys. Besides, the bullet that wounded you in the arm was fired from Chuck Howard's thirty-eight. I checked the ballistics. Go on, Ray. Over, Mark. Oh, you came to see us again, Ray. Please. So have we. So that makes it even up. Try to even this up. I'm okay. Stacy took one of Lin Juan's bullets. Yeah, he took it all right. Might be 20 eyes. How about you, Alicia? I'm all right, Ray. Thanks to you, I'm quite all right. Oh, brother, what a finish. Hey, how's that Lin Juan carrying? I shot him in the thigh. He should recover in time. Yeah? Time for what? To be executed. And over here, they do that in a rather sharp manner. Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, comes to you from Hollywood. Others heard in tonight's cast were Gene Bates, Ted Von Elf, Bert Holland, Barney Phillips, and Charlie Lund. This series is written and directed by Buckley Angel and Joel Murcott. The music is composed and played by Ivan Ditmar. Be sure to be with us again this same time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production.